Hi, I'm Steve Levine. Welcome to my studio. Demonstrating today the Hughes and Kettner Tube Master Deluxe 20. Now, as a record producer, I love to have devices that enable musicians to play in the control room, but also because I have the luxury of a load of great mics and a room, we can get some very interesting tones. So the first setup is the Hughes and Kettner set up using its DI, built-in DI, which has amp simulation and mic simulation, plus it's going out via a regular speaker cable into my studio into a Hughes and Kettner cab, which is mic'd up. One great tip, I think, from a production point of view is if you can, do take a DI of the signal. So this is the DI ahead of the amplifier because using something like this, you can reamp it later. So for example, if we've got a distortion setting and when we come to the final mix, we decide mm, maybe that wasn't quite right, we can reamp it, use the chain again and maybe have some less distortion. So the simple setup is Gavin, my wonderful assistant, is going to play guitar and the guitar is going directly into the DI box. That's being split into the mixing console so I can take a clean feed of the DI. Another cable going from the DI box into the amplifier and on the back of the amplifier is an XLR out with Hughes and Kettner's proprietary red box simulation going into the desk plus I'm miking up with a, a, a mic fairly close to the cabinet and in this particular case I'm using the Lewitt microphone it's about maybe five inches from the cabinet so here's the setup so if we listen to the individual feeds so first of all here's the DI signal and as you'd expect go and play very clean signal there and the microphone is picking up a small amount of the room sound which is created with this and just as a comparison here is the direct output from the back of the Hughes and Kettner. What's interesting about this particular setup is that you've got on the back and we'll do a close-up so you can see but you've got some settings that can change the tone color quite dramatically so for example as it's set at the moment, it simulates the sound of a microphone. If you just play a sec. If I change the switch over, you get pretty much the sound of kind of 70s DI'd into a mixing console, which is a really classic sound, kind of Ernie Isley type of sound. That's a really great sound. Um, you've got the difference between a large cabinet and a small cabinet. And also you've got a couple of little tone controls there. So depending on how you want the guitar to sit in your track, you can obviously adjust the front panels, but you can also further tailor it here. Because this is a proper head and I've got it set up with the microphone, I can also introduce lots of color changes by microphone position, how loud the speaker actually is being driven. This has got a setting on it so you can go from, if I turn this up first of all, so, that's it at full setting. I can reduce the load a bit. That. Or down to that. Or indeed off. So if you have it off, then you just literally would have the output. The advantage of loading the speaker differently is the way the speaker reacts in the studio can have a huge impact on how it sounds in the track. One trick that I quite like to use is if the track has been recorded maybe with a drum machine and it's a bit kind of dry sounding, if you drive the speaker really hard and you have a snare drum nearby, the snare will start to rattle in time with the guitar performance and that creates almost the effect that it was tracked with a band. It's a really good little trick. So those are the three tones that you've got just by com combining microphone, direct output using the red box simulation and the DI'd signal. Right, so I'm recording this as three separate streams and those will be available to download if you want to have a complete isolated listen to the particular streams. So track one is the microphone next to the cabinet, track two is the red box output, track three is the DI'd signal. So Gavin's gonna play a few licks and we'll record those. <laughs>
One other great feature of this is it's got a send and return. So we could do the same thing again, but add some delay, but the delay will only be on the red box and the speaker. It won't be on my DI, that'll still be nice and clean. So if you play, we'll just do some dub echo effects. almost create a Leslie effect, almost. Okay. One great advantage of having a send and return for something like the delay is there's no loading of the pickups on the guitar, so the tone remains exactly the same. Plus, as you can hear from the signal, there's no buzz or hum because this is coming off the back of here and we're using the right cables to isolate this from that. So it means that your recording quality is going to be vastly superior than plugging the guitar directly into this and then into that. So if you do download the three files and have a listen to them, one of the things that's really interesting with both the red box and the microphone is although this is a single mono guitar take, you can actually pan those two signals left and right and get quite an interesting stereo signal. The next example is I'm going to use the DI'd sound to reamp and get a whole nother tone from that same performance. So what I'll do is I'll send from the DAW, from the computer, into this Keymaster, which will take the plus four studio level down to guitar level, pop that into the amp and maybe change to a different guitar effect or something like that. One second while I set that up. Right, now for reamping. So I've taken Gavin's first performance and I've taken just the DI signal, which is going into this, and then coming out of here into that. But this time I've taken out of circuit the memory delay and I put in a chorus effect. So if we play the track. So clean, just going back into the amp, but now to add chorus. Obviously, I could add absolutely any effect to this clean signal. And this time I've got the amplifier set to clean setting rather than the previous distortion. But I could also do this, look. Or have a boost. And with something like chorus, I probably want much more of a clean amp setting. So I'll save that. So we have that recorded. So using this simple concept of reamping. We've just shown the example of an electric guitar, but of course I have an array of synthesizers and drum machines, all of which can benefit from valve harmonic distortion, which sounds absolutely delicious, and microphone technique. So I can use all sorts of different mics, close to the cabinet, further away from the cabinet, expensive mics, cheap mics, all of which will add substantially to the tone. One of my greatest recent loves is taking a plug-in synthesizer that creates the sound of a Wurlitzer piano, which for those that know about a real Wurlitzer, the great sound of a Wurlitzer is both the tremolo and the distortion that the Wurlitzer has. And almost every Wurlitzer you play has a completely different tone. And one of the great classic tones is the sound of the Wurlitzer through an amp with some tremolo. So I'm going to recreate that, but just using a plug-in, but using this to create the tremolo and this to create the distortion and the amplifier and microphone to define the overall tone. So in the first example of keyboard reamping, I'm taking a plug-in, a virtual plug-in of a Wurlitzer piano. And as good as it is, the sound that I particularly like, especially for the track I'm working on, is I want it to be amplified distortion with tremolo. First of all, here's the clean sound. So that's just the plug-in without anything added to it. So it's going into the Keymaster, 
into the amplifier and on the send and return I'm using the undulator to create the tremolo sound. Now the type of tremolo that I want is very much a sine wave as opposed to square wave. So this actually does both but I've got it set on the smoother wave which is more closely resembling that of a, of a piano. If you go to the square wave it's very much like a guitar amp but for this example it's there. The depth is nearly full up and the speed is correct for the track. So here's the sound of the Wurlitzer with just the amplifier using a little bit of distortion from here and mainly the speaker to create the colour. So that's nearly the sound I want, but what I particularly want is the tremolo sound. So I'm going to just switch that in halfway through. So for me that's classic Wurlitzer sound where I've got tube distortion coming from the amp, extra distortion from the speaker and my modulation, tremolo modulation. So for the second keyboard example I'm using the Arp Odyssey synth, again a sound that I used on the same track that you just heard the Wurlitzer sound from. So this is kind of like a bass riff and this is what it sounds like just from the synth itself. So I'm creating the sound using the filter of the synth. But what I really want is to have a bit more distortion and some delay on it. So direct out of the console into here. So it's from the synth into here, out of here, into the amp, from the amp using the send and return back to the analog delay to add some delay to it. And it sounds like this. Plus, I get to do this. So I can do a performance in real time. So you can see that is a very, very creative use of taking an analog synthesizer but adding totally different tone distortion. I'm actually adding also a little bit of extra bass all through the amp. So if you download those sounds, on the left hand side will be the clean sound of the direct synthesizer and on the right hand side will be the process sound so you can do a comparison. Here's my studio setup. In the control room is the amplifier head and that's feeding from speaker cable into the back of the cabinet and I'm using this microphone or that microphone there but this is the Lewitt 550. Setup wise it's just on the basic setup there's no um, pad attached and I've set the attenuation to zero so no pad and attenuation at zero and you can see that from being lit up it's it's now got phantom power which means it's lit up one other little studio trick is I've got this piece of kitchen surface here which I use as a reflector against there because I quite like the fact that when the amp is driving the speaker quite hard you get a lot of kind of buzz and specifically for the Wurlitzer sound that I'm going to create I want some of that distortion and fuzz in the room. The mic is you know just three or four inches away um, if I wanted a different tone, obviously I could have the mic further away or indeed right up against the speaker. But for the type of tone I'm going for, I want you know between four and five inches. It should be about right. So we're pretty much ready to go. I've also purposely left the room set up as it is. So there's going to be some buzzing and rattling and I wanted that. That's part of the sound. I don't want it so isolated because one of the great things about the amplifier head is it has the direct out using the red box. So that's super clean. What I want here is noise to add and mix into it. 